The big political news today is the EU Commission President is flying into London. She'll meet with the Prime Minister as he prepares to unveil a new Brexit deal concerning Northern Ireland. Rishi Sunak will meet Ursula von der Leyen to finalise the agreement and the Prime Minister is claiming that he has won major concessions. He will then face a political battle from Conservative Brexiteers and the Democratic Unionist Party if the European Court of Justice retains any jurisdiction over Northern Ireland. While speaking to Camilla Tominy, the DUP Sammy Wilson told GB News that the deal would need to address the imposition of Brussels law on Northern Ireland. What we do know is that there doesn't appear to have been any deal on the central issue which affects Northern Ireland and that is the imposition of EU law. All of the problems that we face with not able to get goods from GB, uh, checks on goods coming from GB and disruption to our economy stems from the fact that we are under a different set of laws than the rest of the United Kingdom and therefore checks are required to make sure we're complying not with British law but with Brussels law. Joining us for more analysis on all of this, our political correspondent Tom Harwood. But first of all, a new addition to the GB News team, the former business secretary and Brexit minister, Jacob Rees-Mogg. Good morning. Very good, good to morning. see you. And your show begins tonight. Tonight at 8 o'clock, yes. Very good. You will, I presume, be talking about the Northern Irish Protocol. I think we will have to. It is the issue of the day. And by 8 o'clock, we may know a little bit more about what it actually contains, what the new proposals contain. And what are your instincts this morning? Because it's been widely briefed from Downing Street that the Prime Minister has done a good job in getting some serious concessions from the European Union, which is undeniably a difficult challenge. But are you satisfied with what is going to be offered, do you think? Well, when you say widely briefed from Downing Street, you wouldn't expect them to brief that he hadn't done a good job. So that's, to some extent, a statement of the obvious. What I've heard is encouraging that it seems to be the case that there are some important concessions. There are two points that really matter. One is the reaction of the DUP. Will this restore power sharing? Because what Northern Ireland needs most of all is its democratic institutions restored, and that will only happen if there is cross-community consent for the arrangements with the EU. And the second point is looking at the legal text. What does the detail say? Because we found in the past with the EU that it's the detail that really matters rather than the headline statements. So if, well, the DUP don't have cross-community consent by opting out of government in, in Northern Ireland. Um, so why should anybody be listening to what they have to say? They're not the majority party. Um, because that's how the Good Friday Belfast Agreement is set up. So when you say they don't have cross-community consent in withdrawing. That's not actually how it works, that to have the institutions of the Good Friday Agreement up and running needs cross-community consent, of which they are the main, main unionist part. So to have cross-community consent, to meet the tests of the Good Friday Agreement, it needs the support of the DUP. That is the basic situation in Northern Ireland. So the reading that I've seen in terms of legislation and the role of the ECJ, the proposals that I've seen are that the Assembly in Belfast would get pre-legislative scrutiny of new regulations so that then the EU laws from Brussels could be disapplied. Would that satisfy you based on concerns around the DUP and power sharing in, in Stormont? It, again, this depends on the detail. If it means that they can opt out of EU laws and that therefore only law that is approved within Northern Ireland um, will remain law in Northern Ireland, that's absolutely fine. That would be a big step forward. If, on the other hand, it's merely a delay to an enforcement process that comes later, then that wouldn't be fine. Um, if they have the first, that would be better than Norway's got. So that would be a real achievement if they have and an absolute veto. Well, we'll have to see what the DUP does because the DUP are the key uh, decision makers in this. It really needs to be something that gets them back to power sharing. It doesn't seem to be politically astute or wise, Mr. rees for the Prime Minister not to be consulting the DUP on this or saying, look, this is what. I'm going for, do you agree, therefore will you go back into government? I think you make a very valid point. My concern over all of this is that what sounds to be quite a, an achievement has been weakened by not consulting the DUP in the first place to ensure their support was 
on board before it was announced rather than taking a punt that they may like it afterwards. Uh, I think that's unfortunate. I think it hasn't necessarily been handled successfully in terms of communications. Uh, and the defence from, from Rishi Sunak that I've seen um, on that point is that these were very sensitive negotiations and you couldn't involve multiple parties. It's not a sort of decision by committee. I mean, do you accept that you know, those kinds of negotiations in which, as you say, there is an achievement in terms of what he's managed to get in terms of concessions can't be done in that manner? They have to be incredibly secretive. Politics is difficult. Mm. And otherwise, um, we'd be riding at 60% in the opinion polls and everyone would be thinking it was all marvellous. Politics is always difficult. That's not new. Um, you don't necessarily need to run the negotiations with everybody included, but you need to be talking to the other sides to make sure that you know what they want, what their bottom line is, so they don't feel mm. surprised and bounced. If you remember, a week ago, we were being told that there would be an announcement on Monday and a vote on Tuesday on a deal nobody knew anything about. Mm. That quite understandably made the DUP feel they were being bounced into an agreement. You then heard there was going to be some great ceremony with the king. Mm. Um, again, that seemed to be bouncing people, and I think that was a mistake. And word on the street that this could be called the Windsor Agreement. Um, and, you know, there are these constitutional questions. Is it a courtesy cup of tea between His Majesty and Ursula von der Leyen? Or is it diplomatically catastrophic? Well, I, I mean, I think the sovereign should only be involved when things have been completed and accepted. The king gives assent to acts of parliament when parliament has agreed. He doesn't express his view on acts of parliament whilst they're going through the process. And I think the same applies, that um, His Majesty should not be involved until there is full support for this agreement. Our political correspondent, Tom Harwood, listening to all of this, uh, whatever happens, whatever is agreed or, or, or not agreed, um, it's going to be a busy political day, a big political day. It certainly will, and it's a big challenge for the Prime Minister because, of course, this wasn't necessarily a battle that he had to bring to the fore right now. It's not one of his top five priorities. This is a, a negotiation that has now spanned the last three Prime Ministers. Of course, uh, Lord Frost was uh, beginning these sort of talks with Maros Sekovic, his counterpart in the European Union. He resigned, it went across to Liz Truss, it moved across to James Cleverly, the Foreign Secretary, and now for the last few months, Chris Heaton-Harris, the Northern Ireland Secretary, James Cleverly, and indeed the Prime Minister, have been having these talks. I think what we'll see today is not more of these talks. It's a bit of a fiction to say that Ursula von der Leyen is going to come over here and haggle over text. It seems likely this has all been agreed. agreed. Yeah. This is about the theatre and the presentation. Mm -hmm. And the theatre and the presentation matters, because there are lots of people in the Conservative Party who have reason to be... Uh, uh, perhaps not the biggest fans of yes, Rishi Sunak yes. at the moment. The party has not improved markably in the polls uh, over the last few months. The Labour Party is still 20 points ahead. And many people will be thinking, perhaps, what has Rishi Sunak done here? Is it enough? Is it is, if it isn't enough, what are the other games that might go on? People will be listening to what Boris Johnson may or may not say today uh, with great intent. And it will be fascinating to see whether the Conservative Party chooses to unite over what has happened today or if it drives the Conservative Party into further division. This could be a very, very pivotal moment. Perhaps the most important point of presentation that Rishi Sunak has had in his premiership so yeah. far. Lots of people suggesting, is he brave or mad? What a day to launch your show, Jacob Rees-Mogg. Uh, just clear up one thing for us, because you'll be on air at 8 o'clock this evening. Now, on a Monday in Parliament, there were some rumours that there would be a vote on this very matter tonight, but not so. No, there won't be a vote on this matter tonight. Thank um, goodness. And, and, which is very helpful, <laughs> yes. It would have been unfortunate if I had had to miss my first show because obviously Parliament, for any MP, is the priority. Um, but tonight I think there's unlikely to be a vote on the business before the House, which is a second reading of a bill. Um, but yes, 8 o'clock we will be going... Uh, on air, and we have Lee Anderson as a key guest, which I'm very much looking forward to talking to him. Fantastic. Just well, have a it. good one. I just wanted to ask one more question. Have you got any word or any idea on numbers of people that might oppose anything put before Parliament? I mean, I was reading a week ago, it was 100. Yesterday in the Sunday Times, they thought it could be as few as 20. And any word on Boris Johnson and where he's likely to stand? It will all depend on the DUP. Okay. That if the DUP are against it, I think there will be a, quite a significant number of Conservatives are unhappy. The, the position of Boris Johnson is always important. He remains the biggest figure in UK politics 
and therefore his view will be of fundamental uh, relevance to how this debate is carried out. Jacob rees okay. pleasure to have you on. Thank My you pleasure. very much. Thank you. Uh, Jacob's new show, 8 o'clock tonight here on GB News, State of the Nation.